Yes, so hello, my name is Alex. I'm a postdoc in Lars Julientes group since about half a year. And today I'll speak about the project I've been working on over this time. Um, so it concerns the context of where scoring of uh, co-occurring diseases and genes based on text mining, the biomedical literature. Um, so the diseases database is a disease that has been developed in our group over the last years. And it lists associations between diseases and genes, primarily ext extracted from text mining uh, Medline abstracts. So it also integrates, to a lesser extent, um, expert curated knowledge about such associations and genome-wide association studies. If you search the diseases database, you can do that for diseases and genes. And then, you, for instance, you find um, associations between diabetes and insulin. Um, you also have a, a score for these associations based on text mining evidence. You can click on, on the row here, and what you will see is basically all the papers, all the abstracts that co mention the two terms. So mention the disease and the gene, and this list is much longer than what I'm showing here. Um, I also showed you that there is a score associated with each um, association here. And the way the score is computed is actually so don't be scared by the math here, it's actually very simple. We first compute a co-occurrence count, where we just sum over all the abstracts, all the document and the corpus, and just count whether um, a given gene and disease co-occur in the document. If they do, we add a WA, so that's just a constant weight, a constant term here. Um, if they even appear in the same sentence, we want to give this additional weight, so we add this WS score here. So this is just a count for the association between the two. And afterwards, based on that, we compute a score, which is just the raw count weighted to the power of alpha. And then this is just the observed over expected ratio. And we do this not to, so this observed over expected ratio term is to, to also, to not only find genes and diseases that are mentioned frequently, but also look at, at the statistics behind it, basically. So that's very simple. Um, but if you look at this, you see that each sentence in each document is counted equally. Um, so these are four, three examples of sentences that then co-mention a disease and a gene. So the first one reads, Okihiro syndrome is caused by cell form mutations. That clearly talks about an association between the two. Um, the second sentence, Gelsolin, a new marker for breast cancer, that's not really sure. So the sentence doesn't really, only hints at possible association. And the third sentence, PT, PTPN22 is not associated with Beckett's disease, so that actually clearly says that there is no association. While in the current scoring scheme, these are all counted equally, what we are working on now is to improve the scoring scheme in order to take these, these um, sentences into account and basically assign to each sentence a score of how likely we believe it is actually, that it is actually talking about an association. So how does this work? In a very simple uh, depiction here, we give it an input sentence, remove the gene name and the disease name, and then we are left with all the words that basically link them, so it's not associated with. What we do also is training a, a word embedding. So this word embedding, based on, on, on a model called fast text, maps each word to a high dimensional vector of usually about 300 dimensions of real, real numbers. Um, and these vectors are trained in an unsupervised manner and are supposed to put words that occur in similar contexts in the text together. So they are supposed to have similar vectors. So if, if we average the word vectors for all uh, the words in, in the document, in the sentence, we uh, end up with, well, the average vector up here, and that represents the document, the sentence in our context. And on top of that, we can just train a very simple logistic regression model um, to find the probability that the sentence actually talks about an association between disease and gene. And then this is a supervised learning model we can train and then use in, in a subsequent scoring. So what we would expect to come out of this model is higher scores for the first sentence, where we have a clear association stated, while somewhat medium scores for, for sentences uh, that are not really, that may be talking about an association or, or not definitely talking about one while we expect to have low scores for those sentences where there's clearly, that, that clearly negates uh, the fact that there is an association here. Um, in order to get this into the scoring model, we basically just need to 
to replace this term where we before had a constant score for each sentence. We now just use the score coming out of the previously trained supervised learning model um, and then just sum over all the documents as we did before. So that's very simple. Of course, this could be extended in the future by, for instance, replacing this term here, um, which just is a, still a constant store for all the documents. This could also be made um, in a document uh, specific manner. So that's something we could work on during the days, for instance. Um, if we just compare this to this new scoring model that actually looks at the contents, so looks at the sentences, to the previous model that only uses, co uses constant scores, we see that we do a little bit better. Um, the thing we did here is called distance supervision. So we didn't have a data set at a time that assigns negative or positive labels to sentences, which would need to be manually created. So that's why we use the, this distance supervision approach where you only have a knowledge base of um, associations between genes and diseases in our case from the genetics home reference. And whenever you find a sentence that co-mentions a gene and disease that appears in the, in the knowledge base, we just assume that this is a positive sentence. So this sentence talks about an association. Likewise for negatives, um, what this gives you is a very, is a rather noisy data set. So the labels in the data set you're running your supervised learning model on uh, can be wrong, but it gives you a huge data set of hundreds of thousands of sentences. And we, we are positive that our model still is able then to pick up uh, subtle signals uh, in this data set. Yeah, so what we prepared for the for BLA here is this COCO score implementation of the context aware co current scoring scheme, um, which is available on GitHub as a, as a Python library uh, under the MIT license. So, what we have there is a, yeah, if you go to the GitHub page, there's an example that runs through how the, how the model can be used. We also have the supervised fast text model, so that the model we trained on the disease gene associations from um, Medline abstracts and also now PubMed central open access articles subset. Um, yeah, so these training and test set data are also linked there if you want to download them. Um, some ideas what people or what we could work on together here is well using the scoring approach on other data sets that you bring to us because um, well the idea is to make this library for scoring as, as good and as robust as possible. So input from everyone and just trying it out on additional data sets would definitely be of interest. Um, yeah, and maybe trying to distinguish different types of interactions. So for instance, can we distinguish actually gene disease associations where there's a biomarker relationship versus those where there is a genetic underlying mutation relationship between the two? Um, or can we even make the machine learning model underlying the scoring scheme better extended beyond sentences to paragraphs so even whole documents. So these are some of the things we, we could work on here. Um, I would like to thank finally our group in Copenhagen. Um, Lars and Rudolph has, have been working on this project so far. And yeah, the BLA organizers for, for giving me the opportunity to speak here and for organizing the, the workshop and for the travel support. Yeah, and thank you.